Namaste Gurukulians, this is Rajni Arora, TGT SST. Today we are doing uh, chapter 3rd of uh, history of uh, class 7th, the Delhi Sultan. We have done with the three videos. This is our part 4th. In the last lecture, we discussed about the garrison towns as well as their ex expansion. Uh, what was garrison town and their expansion? Okay. So, uh, when garrison towns were at different places or we can say garrison towns were at distance, so it was very difficult for the De Delhi Sultans to manage the garrison towns. Okay. So, it was very difficult to, uh, for uh, Delhi Sultans to manage the things properly or smoothly. So, they, they decided to expand their empire or we can say they decided to consolidate the empire. Okay, in this uh, part we are studying consolidation of sultans was very essential. So consolidation means milana ikatha karna. So consolidation occurred occurred in the rhyme of. Giyazuddin Balwan Aladuddin Khilji Third is Muhammad Tughlaq Okay so, uh, this consolidation occurred. The time period of, or we can say, under the reign of Giyazuddin Balban, Aladuddin Khilji, and Muhammad Ughlaq. Now, we will see the pictures of three Delhi Sultans. This is Giyazuddin Balban, this is Aladuddin Khilji, and third one is Muhammad Ughlaq. Now we will see the time period of three, three rulers, a table which is given in your book. Uh, this is showing the Giyazuddin Balba, the time period of Giyazuddin Balban was 1266 to 1287. And what was the time period of Aladuddin Khilji? The time period of Aladuddin Khilji was 1296 to 1316. And what was the time period of Muhammad Tughlaq? Muhammad Tughlaq was 1324 to 1351. These, these were the time period of these three Delhi Sultans. Now, now we will see these occurred in the reign of three rulers. So, these three rulers done this in what way? These three rulers consolidated the empire in two ways. First is two fronts we can say. First is internal frontier. Or second is external frontier. Internal frontier and external frontier. Now we will understand what is mean by internal frontier, what is mean by external frontier. So first we will discuss about the internal frontier. internal frontier so internal frontier means the area which comes under or which we can say which comes between the area of two garrison towns for example one garrison town is here okay and another garrison town is here the area which will comes under the between two garrison town that is called internal frontier so how these three rulers giyazuddin balbal muhammad tughlaq and aladuddin khilji how these three ruler consolidated the empire they done it in, uh, in uh, internal frontier or external frontier internal frontier we can say the area between the two garrison town is called internal frontier or we can say this area is hinterland okay hinterland 
the area which comes between the two garrison towns or we can write under under this sultanate aimed at we can write here under this sultanate aimed at consolidating the area between two garrison towns okay are you getting my point under this sultanate aimed at consolidating the area which comes under between two garrison towns is called internal frontier okay so in this we have studied about that these three rulers done this uh, this expansion in internal frontier but how they did it how they did the, this expansion first forest were cleared forest were cleared so forest were clear in ganga yamuna dwab what is mean by dwab in ganga yamuna dwab what is mean by dwab dwab means the area which comes between two rivers is called dwab okay so first how they consolidated this empire first they they cleared the forest okay they go, uh, get cleared the forest uh, which comes in under the ganga yamuna dwab means they need to clear the forest between the ganga yamuna dwab to consolidate their empire to to expand their empire next what can we say hunter gatherers hunter gatherers were expelled expelled from their habitat habitat a place where they were living hunter gatherers were expelled means expelled nikalna okay hunter gatherers were expelled from their habitat why the why they expelled the hunter gatherers because it was very necessary uh, to uh, expel the hunter gatherers uh, if they want to do the expansion if they want to do the consolidation then when the forest were cleared then this land were given to the peasants this land was given to the peasants peasants for agriculture okay see forest were uh, first we'll say how the consolidation occurred a uh, consolidation occurred at the reign of three rulers giyazuddin balbal mohammad tughlaq and aladuddin khilji how they did how they consolidated the empire first they did in internal frontier what does mean by internal frontier the area which comes under the between two garrison town is called internal frontier or we can say hinterland okay so under this sultanate aimed at to consolidate the area between the two garrison town how they did it how they consolidated the empire first they cleared the forest for in ganga yamuna dwab second hunter gatherer were expelled from the uh, that area that then this land was given to to the peasants for agriculture why they give this land to the peasants they give this land to the peasant for agriculture because in the last lecture we studied that uh, garrison uh, the delhi sultans were dependent to the another city cities uh, for goods and services okay so they want to grow the agriculture there they want to grow the goods and services there uh, they want to grow the sorry agriculture there so they 
don't they did not have need to depend the on another cities so and these peasants also gave the taxes to the delhi sultans okay this was the internal frontier now we'll study external frontier external frontier external frontier you have understood you have uh, got the internal frontier but what does mean by in, uh, external frontier external frontier means the area which was beyond the garrison towns which was beyond the garrison town is called external frontier okay so uh, delhi sultan uh, delhi sultanate was ruling over delhi and the adjacent cities but there were no there were no major control on the southern part southern part was not included there okay so they started the they started ruling uh, they started controlling the southern part so that southern part was beyond the control of delhi sultan so that, that was in external frontier or we can say land apart from the sultanate land apart from the sultanate which was not under the control of delhi sultans okay are you getting the land which was not under the control of delhi sultans then the these three rulers starting to consolidate the and uh, uh, that part that is external frontier okay internal frontier was the land between uh, which comes under the between two garrison towns the external frontier with the land which was beyond the garrison towns or for example we can say uh, they were ruling over delhi or the adjacent cities but there were no major control on the southern part then these three rulers started to controlling the starting to expand their empire to the southern part or in this uh, map we can say we can see aladuddin khilji started to ruling over the southern part okay here we can say he went to chittor he uh, here we can say he went to varangal he went to gujarat in this way he started to ruling over the he started to expand their empire to the southern parts also okay N now this was the uh, this was our internal and external uh, consolidation but next topic in this chapter is the masjid in the last uh, in the last we understood about the uh, internal and external expansion now we will see about the uh, masjid so delhi sultan delhi sultans were not native rulers they were foreign rulers they also introduced their religion here okay they comes with the uh, with his with their religion and they also introduced their religion to the uh, to this uh, in this delhi sultans okay so they uh, at that time at that time they want to propagate their religion okay they want to propagate their religion with the help of masjid okay mosque is a english word and masjid is a arabic word okay so what is masjid what is masjid masjid is a place where muslims muslim prostrates in the reverence of allah okay i can write a place where muslims prostrates prostrates in reverence to allah 
okay there was a congregational in the in the masjid there was a congregational mosque or we can say what is mean by congregational mosque congregational mosque a mosque a friday uh, prayer which is offered which is commonly offered for the allah okay or we can say main mosque in the city where friday communal prayer is done a main mosque in the city where friday communal prayer is offered okay are you getting what is masjid masjid is a place where muslim prostrates in reverence to allah okay in masjid there is a congregational mosque what does it mean by congregational mosque a main mosque in the city where friday communal uh, prayer is offered okay and it, this is called jama masjid this is called is known as we can say is known as jama masjid okay so in congregational prayer on the day only on friday a communal prayer is offered and these uh, what is the basic features of uh, masjid we can say a prayer is uh, read together which is called namaz okay and uh, there is a person imam who is a respected person who sermons the sermons means uh, uh, to give lecture okay who sermons who is chosen for the rituals of muslims imam is a respected and learned person who is chosen for the uh, for, for the rituals of muslims okay so imam is a person who always sermons to the uh, sermons to the uh, people also of muslims okay so delhi sultans had built several mosques in the city why they they build it they build many mosques for the propagate their religion why they build it there were three reasons to build the mosque in the cities or we can say in the all over the subcontinents first the reason to build the mosque of uh, from delhi sultans were to demonstrate themselves as the protector of islam and muslim okay demonstrate themselves as the protector of islam and muslim second is religious affection religious affection we can say uh, the person who are connected with their religion they have some affection so for that they also build this uh, this mosque all over the subcontinents third is to create the sense of community to create the sense of community or we can say to create the sense of togetherness or belongingness between the people they build this mosque now we will see the pictures of this mosque first is first is quatel is, is uh, islam this mosque was enlarged by iltutmish and aladuddin khilji the minar was built by two sultans qutubuddin aibak and 
Ultutmish. These there were some minars, and these minars were built by Kutubdin Ebak and Ultutmish. The second mosque is Begampuri Mosque, which was built in the reign of Muhammad Tughlaq, was the main mosque of Jahapanha. Okay. Third is Motki Masjid built in the reign of Sikandar Lodi by his minister. And the next one was Mosque, Mosque of Jamali Kamali built in the late 50s, 50, uh, 1520s. Okay. So these were the, these was all about the masjid. So what did you uh, get from this masjid? The masjid a uh, place where Muslim prostrates their uh, in the reverence to uh, Allah. Okay, there is a congregational mosque. Congregational prayer, we can say a main mosque in the city uh, where Friday communal prayer is offered and which is known as Jama Masjid and, and the Delhi Sultanates, uh, Delhi Sultanates build many mosques in the all over the subcontinents. Why they made it? To demonstrate themselves as a protector of Islam and Muslims because they want to show that they, they, they are the protector, they are the uh, protector of Islam and Muslims okay next is religious affection because they were related to these religions so religion affection was also the reason for to build the these mosques to create the sense of community because they want to, uh, to they want to create the sense of belongingness in the people so they create this uh, so they built this mosque okay next is the next topic in this chapter is a closer look A closer look administration and a closer look administration and consolidation under Aladuddin Khilji and Muhammad Tughlaq. So, what is the topic which we are going to study? A closer look administration and consolidation under Aladuddin Khilji and Muhammad Tughlaq. So what does we understand? Uh, in this we are going to study the administration system. We are studying to, we are going to study the consolidation system which was under the time period of Aladuddin Khilji and Muhammad Tughlaq. Here we can say we have completed a segment of this chapter. This is our, seg uh, this is our second segment and in this chapter, this is very important we, we are saying because uh, in this uh, segment we are going to study the comparative study or we can say comparative study between the Aladuddin Khilji and Muhammad Tughlaq. Okay. So uh, now, we are, uh, now we will see the role of slaves role of slaves slaves the role of slaves between the period of Aladuddin Khilji what was the role of slaves between the period of Aladuddin Khilji and Muhammad Tughlaq for the consolidation of Delhi Sultan for the consolidation of Delhi Sultans, there were reliable governors, reliable governors and administrators were required. Okay, reliable governors and administrators. were required okay reliable governors means who own them who can trust 
rather than appointing aristocrats rather than appointing aristocrats as a governor they the delhi sultans specially iltutmish appointed slaves slaves to the political position a closer look administration and consolidation under aladuddin khilji and mohammad tughlaq okay so what was the role of slaves at that time under the period of aladuddin khilji and mohammad tughlaq for the consolidation of delhi sultanate okay for the consolidation of delhi sultanate they required reliable governor on them because it was very difficult for us uh, for uh, uh, delhi sultans to manage all the to consolidate all the uh, empire so they required governors and administrators administrators but they can't trust on everyone so they need reliable uh, governors okay on uh, them they can trust so the, uh, for that purpose they appoint they rather than appointing aristocrats aristocrats means a person who is belonging to their family okay aristocrats the delhi sultanate especially iltutmish appointed slaves they uh, uh, rather than appointing their ch child or their son they appointed slaves for the political position why they appointed the slaves to for the political position because they th uh, they thought that uh, slaves are uh, slaves will be honest for their master so they appointed slaves rather than appointing aristocrats on this political position okay but there were many authors of tarikh and twariks who were very angry on that because uh, the author of tarikh and twariks were uh, were the favor were in the favor of uh, gender distinction and birth right because they thought that the their sh the the king should be the son of a king okay the ruler should be a son of a king so this was all about today